And now act two of The Man from Medicine Bow, starring Sonny Tufts. It is now the morning after, and Dave Sherman is tottering about his apartment, looking a little bit draggled. What little sleep he did manage to get was beset by all manner of lurid dreams concerning underworld trigger men with flat noses and cauliflower ears. He hasn't the vaguest notion that his meeting with Slapsy O'Connor was a carefully rigged bit of high whimsy. And if he did, it is doubtful that he would appreciate the humor. At the moment, he is pawing through the morning papers in quest of a little diversion to quell his fevered thoughts. All of a sudden, Wambo, a startling headline, looms up before his jaundiced eyes, then does unpleasant things to the region of his solar plexus. In a veritable tizzy, he yanks the telephone out of its cradle and frantically dials Connie Bannister. Hello? Hello? You sure Miss Bannister's not there? Well, she heard about the robbery? Well, the robbery bought her father's bank. They did it. Never mind, listen. Slapsy O'Connor is supposed to come to her apartment at 3 o'clock. If he shows up, don't let him in. Meanwhile, I'll try to hit him off his truck. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. And then we've got to... Hey, Slapsy. Slapsy. What do you want, Muggs? Can't you see I'm talking on the phone? Slapsy, there's a guy out here named Sherman, Dave Sherman. He says he knows who pulled that job this morning. What? Now, oh, some stooly looking for a cut in, eh? Yeah. I'll call you back, Lefty. I gotta take care of something. Okay, I'll ditch this bag. You let him in. Okay. Stick around, he may make trouble. Right. Hey, you. Come on in. Mm-hmm. Sure, thanks. Uh, now, look here, O'Connor. You've got the. Uh... Hey. Yeah? Well, what? Some mistake. Uh, I wanna see Slapsy O'Connor. I am O'Connor. What about it? Don't kid me. Look, I know O'Connor. Miss Bannister and I had dinner with him. In one of his malls. Uh, or one of his lady friends here last night. Yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. You was here last night, I remember now. I seen you with that Park Avenue bunch. The Park Avenue bunch? What? Wait a minute. I get it now. Yeah, I guess I'm wrong, mister. You see, I'm a stranger in town. I guess I'm just running my way around. So I'll be running along. Just stay where you are. Now, wait a minute. Now, I don't know who you are, but you played a bump card this time. Frisker Muggs. Okay. I don't think you fathers would better try that. No, no. Hmm? Turn around. Uh, oh, sure. You mean uh, like this? <laughs> oh, look out, Muggsy. Look out, it's going to throw you over his head. Look out, look. You, clear away from him when I saw I could shoot. Muggsy, you fool. Break away from him. Get out. Oh, O'Connor, the gun. All right. Back against the wall. Both of you. Move. Yeah, yeah no. Now, look here. Never look here, mind. fella. Look. Never yeah. mind. Do as I say and move fast. Now, where's that dough? Now, oh, we have... Don't give me that. If the money wasn't here, you wouldn't be. Better make up your mind, O'Connor. Uh, he means it, Slapsy. Uh, it's right over there, bud. Thanks. Now, look, look, look. You. You don't think you're going to get away with it. Hang on your trail. Now, get smart. Make a split. We'll call it square. Well, uh... Sorry, old boy. See, I've got other plans, though, Connor, and I'll need all this dough. Now, wait a minute. Wait. Stand wait. back. <laughs> Hope you don't mind waiting in here till I get underway. Well, so long, and thanks for saving me a lot of trouble. Oh. Well, oh. how do you like that? Oh, come on. He's locked it from the outside. Come on, come on. Go through this window. Where are we going? Oh, it's in the alley, ain't it? Where do you think we're going? To train like that. <laughs> Tip him off now. Hey, last night. Well, we could carry it on from now on out. Oh, sure, Connie. Say, what's happened to you? Don't tell me you've gone soft for Mr. Wide Open Spaces. Well, it's a dirty trick. Suppose we went to Wyoming. We'd be pretty green ourselves, well. and we wouldn't expect the people we... Well, that is, our friends who try to make fools of us. Ah, Connie's right. Suppose we just use the gag again when he, when he just gets here, and then we'll let him in on it. Uh... <laughs> you know, I, I want to see his face when Connie tells me. And that's... Hiya, Connie. Oh, Dave, here you are. Uh, hello, Slapsy. Hiya, Margie. Hello. Glad you showed, Wyoming. I thought you might have gotten cold feet. Cold feet? Yeah. I guess you people haven't seen the papers. Here. Hmm? Read this. Bank 
hold up. Yeah, that's right. A two hundred thousand dollar job. You know, it's my nice to slapsy here to tip me off on it. Well, I tip. Uh, I'm, I'm. I tipped you. Well, sure, I pulled it without you. You see. Dave. Dave, you didn't rob that bank yourself. No. Open that bag. Why, I... Look, it's money. There's thousands here. Exactly 200,000. That's what the paper said. I thought I'd wait till now. You see, uh, since you gave me the steer slap, see, I wanted to cut you in. Cut me in? Dave, listen to me. You didn't really do this thing. You couldn't. But that bank belongs to my father. Talk to your friend. It was his idea. You fool, this whole thing was just a gag. You can't take it seriously. No, why can't I? But you'll get caught, Dave. You'll be in a terrible jam. I suppose I do. What's that to you? It's a lot to her, if you really want to know. After you left last night, she said she wondered where Wyoming had been all her life. Did you say that? Connie, did you say that? I suppose I did. Come here. Well? Dave, please, I'm sorry. I didn't really mean to. Dave. Gosh, he kissed her. Well, <laughs> that settles that. Connie, you're coming with me. I'm what? You're coming with me. This gangstring is a waste of time unless you got a mall to hang diamonds on, and you'll do for me. Get the money, let's go. Why, you, you big overgrown moron. If, if you think I'd go away with you and with my father's money. Well, I could steal somebody else's money, you know. Well, you get out of here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. Uh, toss me that bag, please. Huh? Uh, uh, here you are. Too bad, Connie. Gee, we look swell together in post offices. Well, I guess a guy can't have everything. So long. Can you be having nightmares and still have your eyes open? Connie, what's happened to that guy? Is that all you're going to do? Ask questions? We've got to stop him. We may have started all this, but that doesn't mean we can't finish it, too. Hey, who are you calling? The police. I'm going to call them and... All right. Oh. Put down that phone and quick. Who are you? How dare you break in here? Maybe she wants us to come in the front way and send up our names. Shut up. All right, lady, where is he? Just tell us quick and there'll be no trouble. Where is who? Hey, Connie, these men must be detectives. Look at the <laughs> detectives. Hey, did you get that Slapsy? <laughs> slapsy? Uh, Connie, he's Slapsy O'Connor. Oh. Slapsy O'Connor. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is wonderful. Don't you get it? No. <laughs> Well, get what? Now, look here, Mary Slip. Oh, this whole thing, it's all a joke. He's simply trying to fool us with our own trick. Oh, it's wonderful. Oh, yeah. And to think we almost fell for it. All right, mister, whatever your name is, relax. You both did a grand job. The lady, I'm warning you. Oh, now, don't be stubborn. Oh. Hey, hey you. Hey, Connie, look out. He is Slapsy O'Connor. I have seen his picture. Your friend's right, miss. And there's none of us doing any more laughing. Where's that cowboy? Yo, I said, where's that guy? Me? Why, he's right here, O'Connor. Dave! Drop those guns and put them up both here. I, I, I dropped mine. And now you, O'Connor. Yeah. Yeah! Oh! Dave, that was a honey. Are you all right? Sure. All right, here's the place in here. Come on in, boys. All right, who's this fellow Sherman who sent for the police? I sent for you, officer. You'll find that Eastern National Bank money over there in that bag. That money from... Hey, is this on the level? No, it should be. This is Slapsy O'Connor, and the other one is Muggs Halstead. Well, I'll be a... an Irish cop. Well, what about the rest of these people? Well, I'm... Uh, I can't tell you much about the men, you see, but uh, I'll be glad to swear in court that this girl told me she was Slapsy O'Connor's mall. Dave, don't tell him that. Either. As for the other one... Dave, uh... Dave, you win. We admit it. Please, officer, I'm Connie Bannister, and, and, and these people are all my friends. You have the men you want. Yeah? Well, I'll, I'll take your word for it. For now. Come along, you two. Let's go. Oh, oh Mr. Mr. Sherman, <laughs> you're wonderful. Yes, old man, I, I'll have to confess that... <laughs> Uh, I... Maybe we'd uh, better be going. <laughs> Come on. Of course, we might have tried to say goodbye. And um, who would have cared if we did? Well, why don't you say something? Why don't you? Well, Dave, I, I want I you to know... Oh, sorry. <laughs> what well, I, I really... Admit... Miss... Uh, my turn? Your turn. Well, Wyoming. 
Excuse me. How about it? Just like that? Just like that. I mean, well, you said you wanted... Well, Wyoming had been all your life. You did say that, didn't you? Mm-hmm. You Who see, I... My turn. Your turn. Yes, Dave. I've... I've got an idea. I'm going to know where Wyoming is for the rest of my life. And so the curtain falls in the last act of The Man from Medicine Bow, starring Sonny Tufts. In just a moment, a word from our star, but first, an important message from our government. Nurse anesthetists, did you know that you may be eligible for appointment in the Army Nurse Corps Reserve in the grade of captain? The requirements are seven years of professional nursing experience, one year practicing anesthesiology, and, of course, your certificate from the American Association of Nurse Anesthetists. A captain's base pay is $313.50 monthly plus subsistence allowance. Write for further details today to the Surgeon General, Department of the Army, Washington 25, D.C. Now, once again, our star and our host, C.P. McGregor. That was doing the expected, and in spades no less sunny, which means giving us a fine performance. Tell us, how come you gave up the full moniker, Bird, for plain sunny? Well, I'll tell you, C.P., it is kind of funny, but... You see, people have been calling me Sonny for a long time, but I really decided on it when I graduated from Yale. The, I wasn't exactly what you might call the uh, Phi Beta Kappa Timber, and uh, <laughs> at commencement, when I walked up to get my diploma, the president of Yale said, uh, well, Sonny, just like <laughs> that, you know, <laughs> as if he hadn't expected me up there for another ten years. <laughs> anyway, uh... I thought if Sonny was good enough for the present year, it was good enough for me. Fair enough, Sonny. Tell us, how did you get started in pictures? Well, uh, C.P., I, I'd been working as master ceremonies in New York nightclubs and hotels and things, and somebody said, why don't you try pictures? So out I came. And uh, with me was this fellow, Jack Darnley, that paved the way. But he actually was no agent, and, but he knew a few people here, and he, he called a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend, one of those things, you know, <laughs> in the Paramount. Oh, appointment was arranged, and Jack... To... Well, uh, the casting department uh, broke all directives and ordered a test. That's really one for the book. What then, Sonny? Well, they gave me a handful of scripts and asked me to pick a scene that I liked. And the funny part was I, I, I chose one that looked vaguely familiar and played it all the way through for laughs. And uh, then I found out a little bit later that I'd burlesque Charles Boyer's most tender love scene with Irene Dunn in Love Affair. <laughs> a neat trick if you can get away with it. Well, Sonny, thanks again for spending an evening with us. Well, I enjoyed it very much, C.P. And, and you know, I seldom miss your program. There's no kidding. And uh, any time you want me back, I'll be around. I love it. Well, I certainly appreciate that, and I'm going to ask you to join us again real soon. And now, Sonny, ladies and gentlemen, next week we will present another favorite of yours, Michael O'Shea, who will star in a fast action story titled Fighters Always Come Back. This is the story of a great ring champion who was framed in a title bout the long trail back to the rosin and squared circle. I know you'll enjoy every minute of it, so be sure to join us. Till next week, then, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening. And cheerio from Hollywood. Sunny Tufts appears courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars in this program. The script was by Paul Franklin with the music of Eddie Dunstetter. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking.